Hi, in this tutorial video I'd like to show you how to rebuild a stripped down Erie 2400 series valve body. So looking down on the valve now, the first thing that I'm going to replace is the worm drive shaft. And there's a couple of things to note about the worm drive shaft. It has this Teflon washer on the end. It has a sealing rubber o-ring here and the end of it is D-shaped. So it has this flat portion to it here. So I'm just going to screw the worm drive shaft back in taking care that the Teflon washer doesn't fall off the end and because of the sealing rubber o-ring there's no need to do it up too tight so I'm not using any tools here and I find I can get it tight enough by hand if you over tighten it the danger is that you'll squash the Teflon washer and also it will make it difficult or more difficult for the motor to turn the shaft. So just make sure that turns freely. And the flat portion that I mentioned on the end of the worm drive shaft, that needs to be pointing down at this stage. So next comes the float valve which just drops into the bottom of the valve body there. But make sure that it's properly seated and pointing upwards. It hasn't fallen on its side, for instance. Then there's the little spring, which just drops into the hole in the top of the float valve. Next comes the gasket and you might be able to see that the gasket's got an impression made in it on one side and not on the other. So it goes impression side up, you can use this keyhole shape and this keyhole shape to help you get it the right way round and there's a locating lug here which goes into that hole. So drop the gasket in there. Next comes the insert plate, which has that same pattern, this time on its underside. That's actually what's made the impression in the gasket. And again, you can use these keyhole shapes to help you get it the right way around. It shares the same locating lug. And it also has this spike on the bottom of it, which has to press down into the hole in the top of the float valve. And I find it useful to use a pair of pliers when I'm lowering the insert plate into position, because that helps me not to push the float valve out of position. So just give that a press down. If I turn this upside down now, you'll be able to see the bottom of the float valve properly seated. And you should be able to press it down with your finger and watch it spring back into position. Obviously you won't be able to do that if your valve is still attached to the vessel. But it's important not to push the float valve out of position when fitting the insert plate. So next comes the injector which goes in this hole and the injector has two rectangular windows in it. One of these windows needs to be pointing 
out 90 degrees from the side of the valve. In fact, towards this port in the side of the inlet port. So with one of the rectangular windows pointing out, push the injector down as far as it will go. Then comes the seal disc and there's a new locating lug now here. So find the little indent on the underneath of the seal disc, line that up with the locating lug and just press that down. Next comes the rotor plate. That obviously goes smooth side down. And so long as these holes and these holes line up, it doesn't matter which way round it goes. Then comes the rotor cam, which has this sort of figure eight channel on its underside and inside that channel is a seal, a rubber seal, so just make sure that's still in place. It doesn't usually come out. And on the upper side of the rotor plate here is a similar figure of eight pattern which actually slots into this channel on the underneath of the rotor cam. So line those up and give it a press down. Next comes the worm gear. Now, the worm gear has these two arrows on its upper side. And one of these arrows needs to line up with the second tooth on the worm drive shaft. Now, it's all one tooth really because it's a spiral. But if we can imagine for now that that represents the second tooth on the worm drive shaft. The worm gear has to drop into place so that one of those arrows is pointing to that second tooth. Then there's a little polyethylene washer which drops down over the top of the rotor cam there and just sits on top of the worm gear. And finally, the valve cover. The valve cover has a sealing rubber o-ring around the outside here, so make sure that hasn't fallen off. And it also has this Teflon o-ring in here. Sometimes you might find that the Teflon o-ring has remained in place here on the rotor cam. But as long as it's in place here, or inside the valve cover, that's fine. The valve cover will only go on one way round, so offer it up, give it a little press down, and then it's just a case of replacing the six bolts. And when you're tightening the six bolts, it's a good idea to do them in opposite pairs. So for instance, you might tighten these two first, then go on to these two, then go on to these two, and then repeat that pattern until they're all tight. So there you have your rebuilt Erie 2400 series valve body. But now you're going to want to replace the valve front. When we were rebuilding the valve you might remember me saying that the flat part of the D-shaped end of the worm drive shaft needed to be pointing downwards. And that's because the valve front has this coupler on the back 
which has a D-shaped hole in it to accept the D-shaped end of the worm drive shaft. And with the valve front in service mode, which it should be, the flat part of this D-shaped hole will more or less be pointing downwards. So then it should just be a matter of offering the coupler over the end of the worm drive shaft. and replacing the two screws and that should be it thanks for watching